Hello and welcome to Dear Hank and John. Or as John likes to call it, Dear John and Hank. It's an advised comedy podcast where we give you dubious advice and dubious comedy. Uh, <laughs> what else do we do? Talk about death and the, uh, the chipmunks. Yep. Apparently. And, and, and John isn't here today. No. So I am filling in and I am, I'm Catherine. This is Catherine, my wife. Catherine, Hank's wife. That's how you designate me. <laughs> and we also bring you all the week's news from both Mars and AFC Wimbledon, though I don't know that we're going to get any AFC Wimbledon news today. Eh. Are they doing anything interesting? Uh, I bet. Sure. Maybe. Mm. I, I just, I often Google League One table and I see if AFC Wimbledon is, ooh, well, I just did that. It's so less good than it was the last time I did it. Okay, well, there you go. But if we'll get there interested... at the end. We'll get there at the end of the podcast. We won't talk about that yet. Um, but uh, but then I ask, how are you doing, Catherine? Um, Catherine is okay. I just noticed that my computer has 13% battery, so I'm right. doing better than my computer. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm currently growing a human. Yes. Outside of my body now. Uh-huh. Uh, after having done it inside of my body for... Yeah. Don't let them tell you it's nine months. It's nine and a half, sometimes ten. And it's draining, let me tell you. Yes, literally. The whole thing yeah. is just from stop, you know, start, you know, start to start to finish draining. And then there's the the person. Yeah. They come out and they still need you. Need you, literally. Uh -huh. Like, you know, I mean it still subsists on your body. Yes. It's different. Yeah. I wouldn't say I love it. You love him? Yes. But the thing of, like, having to be his only... Uh-huh. It's weird. Well, it's, it's going okay, because he keeps getting bigger. Oh, he's huge. He's big. He's big -o. Um, Which is fine. I, I, I am pr pleased and proud to be doing it. Yeah. I'm... I guess enjoying it because it's this crazy experience that is mm -hmm. like nothing else. Yeah. But it is not easy. Yeah. And it is not 100% joy all the time, you guys. No. There's, oh man. There's Don't so let many, anyone tell you. So many things that you will read and we were, oh. There are, the, oh man, so many things you will read that will make it seem like some, I don't know, maybe this is the case for some people, that it is this like, or like almost like physically joyous thing at every step of the way. Mm. And maybe that is the case for some people. Yeah. But. Those are, I, those people gotta be rare. Yeah, I think it's the minority, and yeah. I think that I think that it's hard, and I think yeah. that that's fine. Like, oh, totally. I just I I I'm, I'm not I'm don't not don't like the idea that like people it, try to sugarcoat it. Well, yeah, I mean, you don't do things because they're easy, right? All the things that are worth doing are hard. Well, I mean, whatever. Except, but. for Patrick's question. <laughs> If we just want to jump right in, sure. Let's Patrick answer, let's has answer a great, some questions. Yeah, has a great uh, a great. Uh, take on what I just said, maybe not being true. Patrick says, Dear Hank and John, yesterday I received an email that is semi-troubling. Semi Spotify sent me a year in review email that revealed several facts about my consumption of music on their platform, the main fact being that I spent over 27,000 minutes listening to music in 2016. That's 19 full days. I can't help thinking that while I enjoy the music I listen to immensely, it has been a waste of time. Again, I would like to say that I love the music that I listen to, yet I can't help but think that of all the things that I could have done, how much time I could have spent with friends, or how much I could have written. I think what I'm asking is how can I, for the new year, try to put more thought into what I consume or find a better balance? Well, I want to, before I answer that question, I want to go back and say that if you find joy in a thing, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. So, no, there, there are many things that are worth doing that yeah. are not hard. Just because you enjoy them. Yeah. Um, also, like, 19 days, isn't that yeah. large a portion of the year? Yeah, I mean, I spent 19 days doing boringer things than listening to music. Probably I pooping. Wish, yeah, probably. I <laughs> wish that I spent time 
uh, uh, that much time listening to music. I, I love listening to music myself. I think that it gets you in touch with like a human thing that is very sort of visceral and like uh, yeah. I miss having the time to spend lots of time listening to music and discovering new music. And also I will say that, Patrick, you probably did other things while you were listening to that music. Well, that's my question. Like it, when he's listening to music, is he just listening to music even because if you, I feel like that is not what most people's experience of listening to music is. Even if you are just sitting there with your headphones on. Sure. And that's all you're doing. You're just like your eyes closed, got blindfold on. Yeah. Headphones on. Yeah. You're submerged in a, in a tank. You can sense no other sensations. <laughs> you're still doing other stuff. Sure. Like you're listening to that music. You're thinking about your life. Uh-huh. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's got to be. It's reflective contemplative time. Yes. And it's, it's, uh, right. It's, Giving you time to become a more of a person. Yeah. Whatever. I, I don't think you should be worried about this at all. So, I mean, you say that for the new year, I want to try to put more thought into what I consume or, or find a better balance. Again, Catherine said 19 days in 365 isn't actually all that many. Yeah, that's uh, not... I don't think you ha- they have, you're having a trouble with balance. No. Um but but I do think that you should put thought into into what you consume, uh, and I also do think that spending time creating stuff is also really important. A thing that I can get trapped in sometimes is I can consume a lot of content that's very, very good, and I feel like I'll never make anything that good, and so I won't even start. Mm. And forgetting that, of course, every, everybody who created something that I really love, their first song they ever wrote wasn't a masterwork, you know? Sure, yeah, yeah. Though, and the, and, I kind and of, also with songwriting, sometimes I feel like it is that way. Well, it the can't first be. song they write, I'm like, "What? This is your first album? Stop! Leave! Go away!" <laughs> well, it probably wasn't the first song they right. wrote, though. Right? They probably wrote those songs in middle school that nobody gets to hear. Oh man, would I love to hear? Yeah, some juvenilia from like Adele and right. Well, at the same time, like Taylor Swift, what is she? Fourteen? <laughs> <laughs> She's writing amazing stuff. She She's has, a child. She has help. Let's, <laughs> she probably has help. Let's be honest. Um, anyway, the thing about, you know, making stuff is the more you do it, the better you are at it generally. Yeah. Um, right. or, or at least you'll find more joy in it or you'll find a more, uh, you'll find a better direction. I think if you're having a good time listening to music. Do that. Do it. Definitely do that, Patrick. Have a good time. All right, we got another question. It's from nobody. I didn't write down the name. Who says, Dear Hank and John, uh, they'll know who they are. As I was celebrating New Year's Eve with some friends, one of my friends said that uh, they, that they, in quotation marks, added a leap second to oh. the end of every year to match up with the Earth's rotation, which is slowing down over time. Who is they? Mm. Is there an international time society that d- d- decides what time it is across the world? Yes. How would that decision have been made? Yes. Um. This is a fantastic question because you don't think about the fact that somebody decides what time it is. This is important because it is New Year's Day when we are recording this. So yes. It well, it also we should have started the podcast by saying Happy New Year. It's the first podcast of 2017. Probably should have started the podcast by saying that Happy New Year. It's the first podcast of 2017. 2017. Woo woo woo! Brrr. Noise maker. Pow 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 pow. pow. <laughs> Really good. That's good. All right. Well, we got that done with. Um, but yeah, to, so there is a we thing. We didn't plan this very well. We did well. not plan very well. There is a thing. We're busy. Who, so who do you think cares most in the whole world what exact time it is? Um, I'm sorry to put you on the stop, the spot here. The stock market. They care. Uh but not as much as... Some sort of international monetary fund. <laughs> it's not the money people. The money people are it's not more the abstract. Money people? Yeah. It's, oh, okay. Um, it is then... Give me a hint. What it if... has to do with space. Silence. <laughs> <laughs> it's the satellite people. Oh, okay. It is the, I went it's a lot like, of places, yeah. It's the, I didn't uh, get there. It's okay. It's the... Uh, it's the telecommunications people, oh. oddly enough. Oh. So the International Telecommunication Union, 
does a bunch of different things. They define a bunch of different things. They help create standards for telecommunications in a bunch of different ways. But one of the things that the International Telecommunications Union does, which is a probably based in Geneva, Switzerland, I'm guessing. Sure. They decide what time it is. And that is very important for things like GPS, for cell phone, for cell phone, like when, when the towers are going to be working and when the satellites are going to be working and, and figuring out. So it's of, not so much junk. about where the satellites are in space? And, and, and it's about where the, you would need to know exactly where they are. Okay, so it is. So, so you need to know when they locations. are. locations, yes, yeah. yes. You need to where, know where they are in time and space. Oh. Um, so yeah, they, they also divide up like the bands of, of, you know, radio frequencies and stuff like that. So there's this, this organization and they just, they just, yeah, they are in Geneva, Switzerland. No, they're in Bern. No, they're in Geneva. <laughs> <laughs> and they have existed since 1865, and uh, they're kind of now part of the United Nations. And that's and it's sort of amazing to me that like like everybody agrees on that. We, nobody nobody has a different time. The way we have different distances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have we have different years even, but we we have the same sure. time because it was a relatively late addition to our like to to the metrics of the world. I like, mean, kind of though. But, like, in China, they have the same time, but yeah. it's not, like, actually relevant, depending on where they are. They have the... Well, I mean, it depends on who you are. Time might not be relevant to you. Is that what you mean? I don't know. I, I just... It seems like... Hmm. I don't know. It seems... I mean, it's arbitrary, obviously, but... Yes. Yeah. It's totally arbitrary, but it's important to be able to keep perfect time. Okay. So what was the question? Who are they? Who are they? Okay. They are well, the they... International Telecommunication Union. We, and we all agree That's who to, they are. To, uh, to allow those people to decide for us what time it is. Well, because... Tacitly. Yes. Without having any idea that they exist. Right. So I just want to say thank you to the people of the International Telecommunication <laughs> Union for doing all that hard work. Uh, and it is interesting because you always hear like, we're adding a second. But right. like, who is we? Them. Who is they? Who is they them? Are, they are them. They have done it. Indeed. Do you want to read a question, Catherine? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for one. Uh, here's a question from Olivia. My family has an odd Christmas tradition of putting a coconut under the tree. <laughs> that originated when my grandmother was a child. Oh, neat. We haven't replaced the coconut for several years and simply store it with our other decorations. I was wondering what happens to the milk inside the coconut. Oh, does it dry up, as my mom guessed? Does it turn into coconut cheese? <laughs> How would said cheese taste? Oh, God, coconut cheese. Should we get a new coconut? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, I wish I knew the answer to this question, but I, I certainly do not. I no, think it I, dries up. I didn't, um, I did not do any investigation into this question. Well, then we're just going to say it turns into coconut cheese. I mean, coconut cheese it is. <laughs> coconut cheese is definitely As to what it whether is. you should get a new coconut, I, I don't think so. If it's not bothering you, if the coconut does not seem to be turning into something does you it, don't yeah. want to keep around does it anymore. Yeah, does it smell? Does it then, smell like coconut cheese? Then keep the coconut. Definitely. <laughs> Uh, it's I not mean, the coconut. Who needs more than one coconut? Yeah, no. Where do you even get one? My real question you get them, is... You can, can you get coconuts at the grocery store? I have no idea. My question is, why? I know. That's the real question here right? for me. What, you can't what just, does the coconut symbolize? Is it like an, an allegory for the baby Jesus? It's, of course it is. It's uh, the seed of yeah. God. I don't... <laughs> Like it's I, full of the nutrient milk of his forgiveness. <laughs> how do you how do you send an email to somebody being and like sin? We have a we have the nutrient milk of sin. We we have a tradition. We keep a coconut under the tree. It dates back to my grandmother. I'm not going to tell you anything else about it though. Explain. Do you even know? You explain. Maybe it's just, but it's not, it's not a super old coconut. It's just a fairly I, like, no. It's not like her grandmother's coconut. It's why just not? that this coconut has been around. I don't know. Maybe it got lost in the war. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you have to leave your important things behind. It's true. It's been a long time. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> uh, you know, uh, maybe... Catherine, what happened to the coconut? <laughs> they, had to, they had refugee crises and they had to leave Hawaii. 
Uh, or uh, wherever else they had coconuts. Oh, well, I bet. Uh, well, I'm glad that everybody has their own. Tra- I think everybody should have something special that's their own Christmas tradition. Sure. I don't really feel like we have one of those. Us? Yeah. Just shoveling the walk, <laughs> feeling nauseated, which I have for for the entire time since Christmas. Still going. Still going. Still feeling nauseated. Mm. Um, I have this collection of Santas that I'm yeah. putting together. But it's not, that's not like a specific to me kind of thing. I um, have like the put together the Metal Earth uh, laser cut thing <laughs> that I've been doing for a few years. Yeah, it's I like, guess. ah, Christmas morning, I get to put together a Metal Earth I thing that Catherine get, bought me. I get to be frustrated for three days. <laughs> <laughs> Give myself a headache. And, it's so and strange. My fingers hurt. Like, I'm just sitting there and I'm just like, oh, are you serious? <laughs> that now? If you don't know what I'm talking about, Google Metal Earth. Uh, there are these tiny metal yeah, tiny, sculptures that yeah, you they're put so together. cool, and and <clears throat> I just scream for a day, and Catherine's like, "This is really what you want to be doing," this and I'm is like, fun. "Yes, exactly. This is called fun. This is the best thing <laughs> because it's you know you work hard at it. It's a challenge, but mm-hmm. then at the end you've done a thing. Yeah, and there's so, that thing you did, and you never you can nev- look right at it. Never perfect. Nah, yeah, but it, it is the thing you did. It is the thing you did. We got another question. Uh, this one's from Megan who asks, Dear Hank and John, As I was out on the town with a few friends for New Year's, we came up with a question. Is there a specific name for the clothes someone is buried in? We tried Googling it, but to no avail. I'm a huge fan of the podcast, but when we uh, couldn't find an answer, we knew that you were the ones to turn to. Please answer my question, Megan. Well, you came to the right place. Really? Yeah, do you know what, what burial clothes are called? Um, should I? Well, there's a thing called the burial shroud. Yes, We don't use that anymore. I knew about the shroud. So there's there's the shroud, and there's there's also, I think, what else do they call it? There, it's like the winding cloth. So it's like a big, long sheet that sure. they can wind around a body. Sure. So we don't have those anymore. We have regular clothes, mostly, that we bury people in. Yeah. And that is called the grave clothes. That's the actual technical term for the clothes that you wear when you go into the grave. Or, or, it doesn't matter, you don't have to be being buried. If you're cremated in them, they are also still your grave clothes. My question is, because we haven't talked about this. Yeah. If you die, uh-huh. what do you want your grave clothes to be? If I die? Yeah. Um... <laughs> like, because the thing is, I feel like if I died, you guys would have, somebody would have to get me a new suit. Because don't bury me in that one that I have. It's not very nice. It's too big. <laughs> I, uh, okay. Um, I think I think it's too big for me. But boy, I can't seem to muster any any real care. Right. Um, but I, about that specifically. So just this. So like whatever you freaking so want like to dress me up as, if you Princess Leia. <laughs> Not the bikini. Okay, that's the first thought. No, I was like, like God, the, that's a bad idea. Like the white first right. outfit that she comes out right, in. Right, the white. Mm-hmm. The Princess Leia outfit. Sort of a shroudy not thing. Not the Slave Leia outfit. Right. Got it. Um, but not really. I mean, I don't have, I don't, I don't care. Does he, does, do you want to be comfy? Do you want to wear like a hoodie I'm and jammy dead, pants? Man. It doesn't matter. And I'm, you're going to burn up my body anyway, so who gives... You don't burn yeah, some, put me in something that when it burns causes the least amount of Do you want any like uh, damage. like any, any items a book or Don't do things at my funeral for me. Right, right. Do things at my funeral for the people that are that are still around. Right. Well, what, I, sometimes I feel like it's good to have specific instructions so people don't get into arguments and then they spend the next 10 years being like, "I can't believe you buried dad in that." Okay. Um, that is a good point. Uh, that is the only reason that I would care about these things. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, let's talk about it in like 30 years. Well, I mean, sure. <laughs> how old am I? 30 years. Maybe 20. Who knows how long <laughs> Who I'm knows? Last. Who I'm knows I'm feeling real tired these days, Hank. <laughs> That's not okay. <laughs> you got another question for us, Catherine? Oh, God. Uh, This question is from Celeste, who asks, Dear brothers, I am 13, and Mm. cats sit in my building regularly for my neighbor. She has forgotten to pay me for my last couple of gigs, Mm. but made it up this weekend. I noticed that she gave me $20 more than I am due. Mm. I would normally give it back to her, but it 
came in a holiday card and maybe a little bonus because of the season. Should mm. I keep the money? Butternut squash and flamingos, Celeste and NYC. Okay, you can't just put two weird things together. <laughs> That's like pumpkins and penguins. I get it. It's a squash and it's a bird. Sure. Squashes and birds. <laughs> so I, I, I have a concern, which is that this is 100% present and 0% payment for previous gigs. Uh, yes, exactly. Um, uh, and, and I'm, the, I'm, I'm wondering if there was actually an arrangement to be paid for cat sitting ever. Oh, really? For, by this neighbor. I mean, a lot of times... Well, it seems like some, sometimes they were paid and it, sometimes they weren't Yeah, paid. it does seem like. Yeah. But it, uh, I think that... Um, I mean, it's difficult because you're 13, so it's like you're not you're really just, an employee, but you're doing a favor for someone. Yeah, you should, and, get, you should get paid if it's the thing that they said you were going to pay you for. Yes. That, that, is, that is number one. You should probably, if you're doing this regularly, and you're doing a good job, mm -hmm. um, make sure that you get paid every time. Yeah. But this is this is definitely not back payment for missed previous. You don't payments. think you don't think it's possible that it's back payment plus a little extra? Because I feel like there's a chance that it's one and a chance that it's the other. There's a chance that it's back payment plus a little extra. A chance that it's a hundred percent present. I think it's present. You think it's 100% present? Yeah, because, I mean, but it may be present with guilt associated. Right. Because they realized they forgot to pay you those other times. Maybe. Well, yeah, I mean, the only way to settle it is to ask. But I will say that it's definitely not accidental extra money. Exactly. You got a bonus. Yeah, yeah. Don't 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 give it back. But make sure that you. But make sure that, that also. If somebody has an extra, like give like puts an extra twenty bucks in your. That's a tip. Yeah, they didn't do that accidentally. Yeah. Um, but I would I would have before this happened been like Mrs. Stephanopoulos. Stephanopoulos. I was trying to go with a name that was not definitely one particular nationality, and you totally did that. <laughs> I didn't want to be like the cheap Greek in your building. Oh my god, that's not even where I was going. I know it's, it's also not, it's also out. not even a Greek stereotype. Okay. I don't think. I, I I wouldn't I I wouldn't know. <laughs> the only stereotype I have about Greek people is that they make excellent Greek food. <laughs> that's all I know. Is that good? Uh, yep. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they're, they, seem, they seem very nice. And Democracy! They <laughs> <laughs> they're having a little bit of trouble with their debt. Um, <laughs> that's what I know about Greek people. Uh, so, yes, you got to be like, Mrs. Lady, uh, pay me. Miss like, you got you to gotta have it come up bef before Christmas time and then suddenly... Uh, yeah. But you're 13. I understand that might, might be sure, weird. Sure, that's but, hard. But if you, do, if, you know, you do the thing, uh, you should bring it up. Maybe just, maybe just leave a note. Um, you know, it's in your building. Maybe if you just happen to see her or or him, said lady, I think. Uh, yeah, I think said I think it's a just neighbor. I think it was gender neutral. Okay. I just deleted the question from the So it's room. gone. We don't know anymore. Cuz we're done. We're done with that one. Um, <laughs> usually uh, John and I do it, but okay. Yeah, well, I there's too many things in the document, so I had to have to get okay. rid of them. Anyway, um, yeah, Celeste, I think this is definitely not an accident, so don't give it back. And in the future, maybe just a little reminder. Yeah. When you schedule these things. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. So three three days. That'll be. That'll be however much it is per day. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. Just, just a reminder. Mm -hmm. um, or like when you leave a note, at the end of the the yeah. sitting, if there wasn't money. Mm -hmm. When you just be like, you can drop that off at my apartment anytime. Yep. This is my apartment number. Yeah. Here's my phone number. Just slide it under the door I'll, really or knock love... down or whatever. You know, I, I can yeah. use that cash yeah. for Pokemon cards. I really love noodles. Right? <laughs> noodles the cat. The really sweet cat. Yeah, yeah. Where's yeah. my 20? All right, we got another one. We got to go. We got to move on. That question's not even in the dock anymore. Juliana asks, Dear Hank and John. What is the best way to be empathetic to your, toward your partner's insecurities? I love my partner very much, but I find myself often not being able to relate in the way that they need, and I say the wrong thing. Mm. I want to protect their feelings, and I also want to be honest. Oh. It's a good question for Catherine and I to answer, because we're different. That's real hard. We're different folk. Sure. 
Um, sure, 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 sure. Empathetic towards your partner's insecurities. Mm. Mm. It sounds a little bit. It sounds. Almost, it almost sounds condescending a just in the question judgy. asking. Yeah. But but I understand what you're trying to say. And that's yes. And you have and you have to think about these things and consider it well. Yes. Which I think you're doing a good job of doing already. What is the best way to be empathetic toward your partner's insecurities? Ugh. Uh. How are you empathetic toward my insecurities, Catherine? I don't Catherine? know. I'm trying to think of any. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, I'm really often not because I feel like they're. <laughs> you, I need some. <laughs> yeah. You give Hank a couple extra insecurities because he doesn't have enough. I mean, the thing that I, that is coming to mind right now is just like your competitiveness with John. I am not competitive with John. In his success level. No. Oh. Uh, yeah. Nah. Uh, okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> Just bring them up. <laughs> um, acknowledge them. No. I, yeah. Acknowledging them. Yeah. But, Without judgment, obviously. Mm-hmm. And allowing... I have a hard time doing this, but I, I'll, like, I want to create good situations and spaces for you to talk about things. Yeah, 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 yeah. And just like that, it like get you speaking words. Right. Because... And and uh, in addition to that, not always needing to offer a solution. Right. Just just have the, having the conversation, have, like it's happening. Yes. Um, and, and like you're talking about it, I'm understanding it, you're understanding it. It's out there now. Mm-hmm. Because I think, that, like, like you're not... You don't have to, like... Fixing. No, no. You, you know, Just understanding. Yeah, you don't have to be like, okay, great, what do we do about this problem you have? Right. Because that's not... Mm. That's not your role. No, not really. Probably sh- you shouldn't have to be your partner's therapist. No. I-, I think that there is, like, therapeutic action to conversing. Sure, that yes. It can be very helpful for, for everyone involved to have a good... Uh, like hearty conversation. And I think we don't have enough of those opportunities these days. And there's a lot of like, like feeling isolated and lonely now. Yeah. Cause it's easier to just watch another YouTube video or something. Yeah. Um, and ignore it. Creating some space and whether that's like going out to dinner and being like in a place where you're not going to feel okay looking at your phone or if it's yeah, a, totally. a scheduled time mm-hmm. where you'd be like, okay, we're going to have like next Tuesday, Catherine, can we have, some like phone free conversation yeah, and not have that be like, because like, uh, because there's a big problem happening in our life or because there's a money thing or yeah. just being like, we're like scheduling this for the future. Creating space yeah. for those conversations to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, not trying to solve yeah. problems as you see them. Maybe just reframing like even just how you're con- thinking about these things. Not as problems, but as challenges. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Like, I, I think... I think You say you love this person. Yeah, I think reframing from problems to just understanding. Right. Like, in the way that Mr. Darcy <laughs> loves Elizabeth Bennet because of all her quirks. Right. Not in spite of them. And so, like... Like, loving a person in that way that, that, like, encompasses all of their, like, the things that you kind of don't like about them. Mm. Um, and I guess, like, you have to understand that there are going to be things that you don't like about your like, your partner. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, 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 but, so you say you also want to be honest. Yeah, that's... Mm. That is a little bit of a worrying mm-hmm. word. Because Why? Like, what is it about being honest that you feel you need mm-hmm. to express some, like, is it because you want them to change? Mm-hmm. Is it because you f- are worried about how these are, how this is impacting them? Yeah. You know, like. Is it on an, an unhealthy behavior that you're trying to get them to recognize? Right. What is the honesty? <laughs> yeah, because it, or is it just because you're like I don't like this about you? Yeah, and so and you, some, gotta, you gotta look into that. Yeah, and it's, it's sometimes I have found in my life 
You can't just walk away and keep talking. I know. <laughs> you can walk away. Um, sometimes I have found in my life that what I see as someone's problem is just them living in the way that they want to live that is different than the way I want to live. Mm. And I'm like, you're not productive. And it's like, well, yeah, Hank, you praise that highly. Right. Like, that is a thing that I'm into. Right, but it's maybe not. But not for, it's not for everybody. Yeah. It's not the same for Catherine. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I and mean, I do stuff, but yeah, I'm not no, like... Yeah, no, but it's not like, not like the way that I get really obsessed with, like, yeah. maximizing productivity. Right. And... And then, like, if I'm, if I'm then, like, you know, if I have this, like, sort of hang-up on one particular, like, aspect of, like, how to live a good life. Right, right, right. And I'm not, but I'm not hung up on some other stuff. Like, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that you aren't living your perfect, you know, your best life. Yeah. Just because you don't have all the exact same right. anchors that I do. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, you are living with a person who's not you, mm -hmm. Juliana. Yep. This is, you gotta just, mm -hmm. but you know, if it's unhealthy it, it, right. and if it's like, yeah. if it's, I mean, if it's something that's making you uncomfortable, mm -hmm. like then, then, you know, it's a challenge. Then that, that is a challenge that you either have to work through and let, and, and have them recognize the way that it's affecting you. Um, and if they aren't willing to move beyond having an effect on you that's making this relationship unpleasant for you, uh -huh. then you might also find comfort in solitude. Right. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Uh, yes, this is an advice podcast by two extremely unqualified people. Yeah, dubious. Um, I'm going to answer a question that is less important. Okay. <laughs> This one's from Carrie, who asks, Dear Hank and John, I was sitting at my desk at work the other day when a highly distressing thought occurred to me. I know my cat's name. He clearly knows his own name. Mm-hmm. Uh, but does he know mine? No. I live alone and don't generally refer to myself in third person, so it's not like he hears it that often. Who does my cat think I am? <laughs> <laughs> Am I just an anonymous conglomeration well, of smells and features to his brain? Well, okay. It's so, not that your cat knows his name either, anyway. But it's just like, that's a word that you say. That means, hey, you. Yeah, Look, I don't know. Attention. Right. Like, if that was my cat's name, my cat's name would be pss, 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 pss. <laughs> yeah. That's That's the thing that works most of the time. Yeah, it's pss, pss, or kitty. Or yeah. cameo in a specific tone of voice. Yes. The other thing that I'm worried about, Carrie, is that you think that you are your name. Yeah, and also, and that if your if your cat doesn't know your name, then your cat doesn't. <laughs> then your cat like, do, who does my cat think I am? <laughs> does my cat think that I'm some other person because I because I'm not Carrie? No, your cat thinks you're you. Yeah. Doesn't doesn't think of you as your name by your name. Thinks right. of you as that thing that lives in my house, that very large cat without the fur, who provides me with food. Yeah. Mommy uh, cat. Ma <laughs> <laughs> That's what your cat thinks yeah, of you. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think that, uh, yeah, the, 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 it's, a, it's a funny question. I, do th I did think it was funny. Um, Am I just an um, anonymous conglomeration of smells and features to his brain? Isn't that what we all are to everyone? We're just anonymous conglomerations of smells and features to each other's brains. Well, as humans, we are extremely into naming things. We do love and naming And categorizing things. them. Categorizing. Girk. <laughs> oh, boy. Dad joke in oh, full God. effect. So sorry. Um, so, yeah, you know, your cat doesn't think like you think. <laughs> your cat does not think like you think. It is hard to figure out exactly how Cats. your cat thinks. Right? Cats, they. right? <laughs> That's the moral. That's the moral. Cats, right? I was just watching that video of all the cats getting brain freeze again this morning. What? Cats getting brain freeze? Oh, it's so good. They're like licking real cold yogurt or something, and they all just have this moment where they freeze and spaz. Yeah. Pretty what? much like that. And then at the very end, there's just this one, and he's like, Yeah! <laughs> He makes a noise. <laughs> <laughs> you can just, 
<laughs> oh, there's a whole compilation of it. Yeah, this is the one. <laughs> this is the one. This Ah, they don't like it. They don't like it. We'll put this up on the Patreon. Ah, they don't like it. They do that thing where you're where you're like, you gotta, ah, ah. Ah. you gotta pause and like clench oh. all of my muscles mm-hmm. while this is happening. Anyway. Anyway. Cats, right? Cats, right? Uh, here's <laughs> Back another, to the advice. Here's another question. I don't know if you can count this as advice, but uh, Anonymous asks, Dear Hank and John, why are commercials so loud? Uh, or is it just me? It's not just you. Commercials are loud because... They want you to pay attention. No, I'm going to be completely honest here. No. Commercials are loud mm. because television is ending. And they're trying to sit to trying to squeeze every last cent out of it before it implodes. It's the same reason that when you watch television now, all of the commercials are terrible for things that are embarrassing and probably just like oftentimes fraud television. I I watched some TV the other day. There's so many ads. There's like 300 ads per minute. It's so much, I can't handle it. And they are only for people, like, over 60... Yes. ...who still watch TV the right. way that TV used to be. That's why they're, they're so loud, because a lot of those people are hard of hearing. And it's like, <gasps> hey, hey! You need this uh, button to push when you fall down? <laughs> you need this button? Oh, man. Get this button. I, oof, I don't like... I, I really wish we could have based our content that, like, ecosystems on something except ads. Yeah, I mean, and this isn't to say that, that like, content is ending. No, 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 no. But no, television, no, no, no. the way that it has existed. Right, and, and to be clear, I don't watch TV at the moments when, like, good advertisements are happening. Like, I don't watch The Walking Dead. Like, I'm sure if I watched an episode of The Walking Dead or some other, like... The Super Bowl. ...ad-supported piece of content uh. that... Uh, lots of people actually watch, right. but I uh, usually when I watch TV, it's like, uh, yeah. like it's like I'm stuck in a hotel or something. Right, 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 yeah. right, 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 right. Yes, yes. And it's nighttime, and I'm and, and I'm like, sad and alone and looking for connection, and it's just like here's a here's here's the world's top ten air disasters. Right, and it's it's like uh, you know local yeah a lot of local stuff, stuff that. Oh, is man. not relevant to you and also has just very low production value, which is fine. Whatever. Not everybody can get Rhett and Link to make them a commercial. No. I got a, a uh, response here. It's not a question. It's from oh. Amanda who asks, Dear Hank and John, excuse me, John. This question is for John. I'm going to take it, though. Oh, that's excellent because he's not here to defend himself. But you expressed in the recent pod recording at NerdCon Stories that you aren't allowed to name your dogs similarly to the names of your family members. I would just like to point out to you that your dog's name is Willie and your brother's name is William. Would you maybe like to rethink your terrible mistake? (laughs) Oh, this is a, Ooh, somebody I mean, got called out. So Willie's Hard. name is Wilson, not William. Uh, yes, it's Fireball Wilson Roberts that but, they call him Wilson, yes. not Willie. But but when everyone when assumes we were, when we were looking at baby names, yeah. like William was always going to be high on the list because yeah. my name is William, yeah, and my grandfather's name is William, mm-hmm. and I like and I. I'm not saying that Willie's existence affected that, but yes. But it uh, it did a little bit. Did it? No, not really. No, it didn't. Uh, it was mostly that I didn't want to name my son directly after me. Yeah. It seems like a weird thing to do. Hmm. But anyway, we just wanted to let everybody know that John was a hypocrite and made a terrible, terrible mistake in his dog naming or and or in his criticism of other people's dog naming. So it's one of those two things. <laughs> Definitely one of those two things. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, anyway. Uh, that the, the situation, as you said, is a little more complicated than um, Anna, is it? Uh, oh, who asked that question? I thinks, think it was Miranda. Thinks it was. But also, don't name your animals after your children or, you know, 
Unless that's what they want to call them, I guess. Yeah, it's fine. Do whatever you want to do. Sure, right. Sure. Yeah, there you go. There's that's the right answer. It's a pet. I say they're not gonna name it after some food. (laughs) Just like I say there are an infinite number of pet names available, so don't go for a human pet name because you could name the pet Panatoni and it would be great. Sure, yeah. That's a great that's a great name. You could name it Oreo. Yeah, or pears. Pears. You could name it Noodle, like that cat earlier in in the podcast. Uh-huh. You could name it Gatorade. That's fine. All pet names are are pet names. Like you could glitter. That's fine. Sure. Yep. Two by four. Sure. Why not? Absolutely. Yeah. You yeah. call it Tubi. Lamps. <laughs> <laughs> I love lamps. Yeah. Who doesn't? Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> There's just an infinite number of names available to pets. Yeah. I mean, so. So why give it a why give it a human name? Yeah. That's how I feel. But also do whatever you want to do. I have an Amazon employee who has written in to me. Oh, okay. I would like to hear about this. So in a, in our last episode of the pod, John and I intentionally tried to activate people people's right, Alexas right, 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 right. Yes. and yeah. their uh, Google Homes. And Richard says, I'm a computer science student in a university in the same town where Amazon is, so he's not at Amazon, uh, the same town where Alexa was uh, developed. Naturally, at some point, I came into contact with an employee who was on the Alexa team. They were telling me a fun story that during Amazon's big Super Bowl commercial, when Alec Baldwin and company asked Alexa to do a thing, there was a massive spike in Alexa queries due to people's Alexas in their living rooms being triggered by the TV. Yeah. They also said that this wasn't a surprise to the Amazon employees, as someone had actually thought of this beforehand, and they had, provi- and they had provided extra servers and employees to deal with the spike. So, it is a th- known phenomenon... And the question is, can I buy a television commercial and and steal a bunch of stuff from people by activating their Alexas and making them send me things yeah. with my very loud television commercial that right. I put on some Alexa, television show? Alexa, Mel, Mel, Hank Green, yeah. 900 Snickers. Snickers. I was thinking something more valuable and, and easy to sell. <laughs> Just like, like, can you get Alexa to send me Everybody wants a Snickers. gold? Or <laughs> no, what? Yeah. Yes, everyone knows it's so easy to, to buy gold. On Amazon, right? Just send a small amount of gold, send it to this address, and then I'll just I'll get it, and I'll run away, and I'll finally have... No. I'm worried. I'm I'm worried about Alexa hacking and some weird like oh, yes. like somebody's gonna like walk up to your back window with and like scream at the Alexa to make it do stuff. Yeah, and you should be. Um, I don't. They don't feel good about those things. We have one. Though. I know. We got it for free. Google sent it to us. Sure. They were like, "You're a YouTuber. Here, have Google Home." Okay, Google. Hey, can you want to say some of the podcast? She likes her style. Yeah, she said. She said, "I like your style." <laughs> oh. Okay, guys. I like your style too, honey. I don't like how Okay Google doesn't have a name. Yeah. She's like, you can call me Google Assistant, and she just said yeah something she just because said something. I said Okay Google again. Um, but like, yeah, give. What, I asked her what her name was, and she said, Yeah. Yeah, we couldn't wouldn't let us rename. Yeah, be, but the, uh, there's probably complicated reasons why that is why they can't rename it easily. But I don't like. I would much prefer to call it the name of a thing. Yeah, instead of having to say "Okay, Google" all the time. Okay, Google. Okay, Google. Okay, Google. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh God, I, it, I understand. I mean, I realize that you want me to say Google a fucking lunch, but I don't yeah. want to. I don't. I don't. Can I please just call her pizza? <laughs> <laughs> Lady, lady pizza. Lady pizza. Can you play me the news? <laughs> <laughs> I would like That's to, the future. Lady if pizza, Google I would like to that. hear the news. 
I don't, I'm not saying that everybody should be able to rename their, their Google Homes uh, anything they want, but I think that you should, should at least be able to choose between OK Google and Lady Pizza. <laughs> Those should be the two choices. All right. OK. Give us another question, Hank. <laughs> this one um, is from Sarah, who asks, Dear Hank and John, I was recently watching a Vlogbrothers video entitled Why Are Fewer People Studying Science and Engineering? And I started to feel guilty. I have a STEM degree. I have a BS in mathematics. Uh, Post-college, I accepted a job at an industrial supply company, and while I do not use my degree every day, I do use the problem-solving skills my degree has taught me, but I still feel guilty. Have I turned my back on f my fellow STEM comrades? Should I get a job utilizing my degree more? I'm happy where I am, but I still feel like I'm not living up to my potential, that I am doing a disservice to the world because it taught me all of this skill and I chose another path. Any dubious advice would be welcomed, not Orion. Sarah, um, um, don't be silly. It's so it's so interesting what we can get caught up on and and feel guilty about and get uh, like feel like we have this obligation to like what we used to want or what the world needs. But like obviously the world needs someone to do your job or no one would pay you to do it. And if you like it then that's great. And also, you probably, like, as you say, you use your problem-solving skills, but you probably also use all kinds of the skills that you learned in your STEM degree, and probably that degree helped you get that job in a number of different ways. So, yeah. uh, if you have a, also, if you have, like, an abstract mathematics degree, you're not going to get a job doing abstract mathematics unless you're teaching it. Like, I, oh, wow, we're having a weird blizzard outside. Well, it's just it's very windy, yeah. and the snow is very light, so it's blowing around. Yeah. Oof. Um, um, so, I don't feel guilty, and also, I, I'm i worried now that that video is making people feel like they, they should feel like less of an American or less of a person if they uh, didn't study or work in those fields. The reason... That a lot of people uh, are trying to get more people into those degrees is because it helps you get a job. Yeah. And if you got a job, then good job. You did it. Yeah. <laughs> you, you achieved the goal. Um, it's also because, of course, like you can, you can solve problems and make the world a better place, but you can do that at all kinds of different jobs. You do that when you're a writer. You do that... Yeah, yeah, when yeah, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's when no, you're... There's, there's, yeah. And working I don't know, in service, man. like you, like people... Your job people doesn't at have every to level. change the world, though. Yeah, you do that when you like are helping people, whether that's uh, making them food or making them healthier or or taking care of them when they're old. Like, all of the jobs we do are solving problems for people, and uh, and I I am I'm loath to think that people think that I don't think that. Right. Yeah. It's not like you are you're like this is a better job than that other job yeah though i think there are a lot of people who feel that way and and sure, people notice there's that there's there certainly are that pressure but um so i see Catherine, that you are looking I up was, AFC i was Wimbledon a little news. quiet in that episode in that answering that question while you're answering that question yes well, i was I, I was a little quiet while you were answering that question because yes. i was trying to find some uh interesting news from the afc wimbledon it does seem like it's time to do that already. It does. Well, yeah. Uh, well, I'm just going to watch these cats get in brain freezes while you do that. Okay. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I can't not watch the brain freeze video, though. Okay. Um, so let's what, see. What happened with AFC Wimbledon? I don't know. But I'll read you the most recent uh, article on the AFC Wimbledon news Okay. Site. Do that. David Fitzpatrick played a starring role on New Year's Day for Torquay United. I'm not sure how to say that. The name of that place. No, that's fine. In England. They're not real places and, anyway. <laughs> and it, I mean, I even know where it is, but I, I couldn't tell you how to say it. Um, I, am, I am Surrogate John, and his thing is mispronouncing words wrong. <laughs> I mean, mispronouncing <laughs> words. <laughs> Can you mispronounce something wrong? Saying words wrong. Okay. <laughs> Mispronouncing them. Um, anyway, oh, here, here it is. David Fitzpatrick, apparently a... Sports player. Sports player for the sports team. Torquay United. <laughs> FC 
casting Wimbledon. Oh, he's for episode. Yeah, p- 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 oh. played a starring role on New Year's Day for Tor- Torquay United in a ten-goal thriller at National League Whoa, title chasers Forest Green Rovers. What the, so many words in there that I do not comprehend. <laughs> The Don's winger scored and set up four goals in the game of the day. That's a lot. A five-five uh, draw at the New Lawn, oh, which is man. apparently the name of the stadium because everything has. Uh, I think this article a was written. Superb free kick from Fitzpatrick had put Torquay five to three up before Forest Green hit back to salvage a share of the spoils. Meanwhile, George Oakley also continued his prolific season after returning from serious injury with another goal during his loan spell at Welling United. Why are these characters being loaned to other teams? I I don't understand the sport. (laughs) I'm also super confused. (laughs) This is an article of... Oh, this is a... He's not even playing for the... Wimbledon. yeah. He's playing for another team. They're currently on loan to other teams. (laughs) (laughs) They're doing quite well. Sure. Here's some players that I aren't playing for Wimbledon. They're because doing good at other places. I gotta say, English football is a it is um, um dense. It's dense. There's it's difficult to penetrate the Yes. And uh, we will we will never really know. We will never truly understand. No. Well in Mars news. Thanks for that weird update on Wimbledon, Catherine. Sorry. They lost a couple games. That's what I heard. And some of their players did well on other teams. Good job. In Mars news, China's going to Mars. Uh, and by going to, I mean not their bodies. By 2020, they say. Uh, China is aiming to have a robotic mission to Mars by 2020, which is quite soon. Uh, it's, 20, it's 2017 now, officially. So that's just three years from now. That does not leave a ton of time for planning this, but that's exciting. Uh, And they also want to be sending uh, a robot to the dark side of the moon in 2018. Mm -hmm. They've been doing a bunch of, uh, a bunch more, a bunch more stuff. I heard about this news and it made me curious Mm -hmm. how collaborative all of these plans are. Like, do they follow the same standardized practices of, like, making sure there isn't any Earth stuff, information, mm-hmm. biology yeah. on these things? Um, do, you know, and like, what's the goal? Do they share what they find there? Or are they going to be super proprietary about it like i'm i'm just curious about how that works with because i know that there are like giant there's there's been chinese people on the international space station yeah so well back in the day um it was everything was open and it was very collaborative like like all the stuff we had they could have russia could have anybody could have in terms of what nasa was doing what when is back in the day until 2011 when the Congress was like, stop sharing our military secrets with China. <laughs> um, basically. But, okay, but like, even, but how about back before that day when there was like space race and stuff? Well, yeah, no, no I'm not talking about the 60s. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so, so the, during the like, uh, you know, space shuttle era, you know, 80s, 90s, 2000s. Um, there was a lot of collaboration and a lot of like the idea being like we can work together in these scientific enterprises and it will you know even when we are yeah, arguing about stuff it'll benefit all of us. It'll benefit all of us. Yeah. The uh, scientific data has still been shared. So mm-hmm. when we go to Mars and like all the stuff that Curiosity gets, like it isn't controlled by the U.S. government. Um, okay. The the data can be. Um, like uh, what? What tends to happen is like an instrument. Data, data is shared, but technology is not. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Data will often come through the people who design the instrument. So Curiosity will have like 25 different things on it, uh-huh. and so that the data will come through whoever like created the instrument and knows how to take the data in. And but then hope like the idea is that then anybody can look at that data and and uh, right. do research with it. Right. So. Um, and so plan? hopefully that will happen yeah. in opposite directions as well, and we can compare and contrast, and probably we will. But it is not so much the, uh, you know, like, the 
designs for how to build these things. Mm. Uh, though we do still share that information with some of that information with Russia and with Europe and okay. I think to some extent with China too. Right. Um, just to increase the ability. But there's like a lot more concern now that like China is trying to build systems that might be bad for our national security, mm. whatever that means. Mm -hmm. um, is not something that I find myself to be tremendously concerned about, but others have, uh, you know, Congress and stuff. So, Catherine, what did we learn today? Um, we are tired. Yeah. We <laughs> and it is the new year. Hooray. 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 Welcome 2017 and be beneficial um, probiotics to you all. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I'm, we're just going to have two things that we learned. So we learned that, and we also learned that time is decided by people in Geneva, Switzerland. Uh, sure. Those, they make that call. Those folks. Those folks. And if one day they decided to just change time completely, just add 15 minutes and mess us all up, oh. what would we even do? Go along with it, dudes. I think we'd rebel. No. I think we'd storm the castle. <sighs> um, no, we'd go along with it. Yep. Yeah, we also learned that um, your cat doesn't need to know your name. It loves you anyway. Yeah. Or whatever it is that cats feel. And, of course, we learned that television commercials are so loud because my brother John is a hypocrite. Wait, I think I got my wires crossed on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, Catherine, thank you for joining me on this podcast. Thank you for going to get my baby. He's not crying anymore. Good he job. Is, he isn't. He's happy to be here. Thank you for having him on the podcast for this last moment. Uh oh. Never, uh -oh. We spoke too soon. <laughs> this uh, this podcast is uh, supported by our patrons at patreon.com slash dearhankandjohn. You can send us questions at hankandjohn at gmail.com or with the hashtag dearhankandjohn on Twitter. We are here to answer your questions and give you dubious advice. As always, this podcast is edited by Nicholas Jenkins. Uh, it is produced... Rosiana House Rojas and Victoria... Bongiorno. Bongiorno helped us pick out questions. Yes, and... and Gunnarola does our theme music, and I don't think I forgot anybody. I don't think so either. And so, as they say in our hometown, don't, don't forget, forget to, to be, be awesome. awesome.